Good morning, Facebook, and welcome to Bringing the Zoo to You here at Brookfield Zoo. My name is Jen, I'm an animal care specialist here, um, and today I'm here to talk to you about animal ears. So first off, we have our ball, ball python, Marceline. So if you're looking really closely, you're probably trying to find her ears. I just told you we're gonna talk all about ears. With Marcy, it's a little bit hard to find them because she actually does not have any ears. <laughs> so there's nothing you can see on the outside. She doesn't have that external ear. She doesn't even actually have the hole that leads like an ear canal. Um, but what Marcy does have is she has some of the similar structures inside. So we can't get a look at them today. Um, no one can really see them, but she has those structures in there that help her pick up vibrations. Um, and the reason that this works really well for Marcy is because she is a snake. She spends a lot of her time with her body pressed all along a surface. So a lot of snakes live on the ground, some live in trees. But the way that they act, they have their whole body pressed against something, they can feel the vibrations, which for them is very similar to being able to hear. So right now, if Manelia were to talk or were to laugh or do something, Marcy would be able to feel those vibrations with those parts um, inside of her head. So she can't actually hear, but she can feel that. Um, and that's very helpful to her because she's always gonna have most of her body pressed against a surface. And up next, we have Sterling. <laughs> so Sterling here is an Eastern Screech Owl. And you might think Sterling's ears are very obvious right now. You're thinking, look, they're right there staring right at me. But actually, his ears are very deceiving. So what you're probably thinking are his ears right now are just feathers. Um, so those aren't his ears at all. Um, they are very helpful though. They do help funnel sound down to his actual ears, which unfortunately we're not gonna be able to see very well as his ears are just holes in the sides of his head. So they're hidden under those feathers right now, but they actually work very, very well. Um, so the holes in his head are very similar to our ear canal. They don't have the outside ears, but they do have that hole that leads um, into their head and Screech owls and most owls have a very cool adaptation, which is those holes in the side of their head are sort of lopsided. So if you were to draw a line from one of our ears to the other, it'd be about straight. They're pretty even with each other. Well, Sterling here, his ears are kind of different. There's one higher up and then there's one lower down. And that helps him sort of act like a satellite dish. He can pick up sounds from all over the place. And as I said before, those feathers also kind of help shoot those sound waves down to the holes in his head. And having really good sense of hearing is very helpful for him as he is what we call a bird of prey. So he likes to hunt for his food and he's way high up in the sky and he needs to be aware of his prey, which is all the way down on the ground. Um, he also has very good eyesight, but he does use his sense of hearing to be able to pinpoint exactly where that animal is so that he can swoop down and grab it. And next, we are going to have one of our newest stars. This is Timo, and he is a two-toed sloth. So once again, it's pretty hard to see Timo's ears but he does have kind of similar to ours, those external ears, um, but you can see they're really hidden under his fur. It's a little bit hard to get under there and find them. Um, so he has not that great of a sense of hearing. Um, it's pretty hidden there, so he can pick up some sounds. He can definitely hear us right now, but for him, he doesn't really need a good sense of hearing. You can see he has a very large, beautiful nose, and he uses that way more than he uses his ears. And also for sloths, they're living way high up in the trees. Um, they're kind of blending in as their biggest uh, defense against predators. So if he had these big ears sticking out, it'd be kind of obvious to anything that might think he looks like a tasty snack. So for him, it's way more beneficial to have all of that fur covering his body because way high up in the trees on a mossy 
tree, he's gonna look just like the tree and that's way better for him than to be able to hear really well. Because if the predator can't find him, then he doesn't really need to worry about hearing that predator and trying to get away. And lastly, we have the cutest ears. This is Cloudy, and Cloudy is a domestic rabbit. I'm sure she looks pretty familiar to a lot of you. And so Cloudy here, you can very clearly see her ears. So she has those nice big ears, they're nice and long, and they can move around, kind of twist and catch sound. And that is because Cloudy is considered a prey animal. So there's quite a few animals out there that would like to see her as a food item. And Cloudy doesn't have too many defenses, so for her, what she wants to do is to be able to hear that predator as soon as she can and run away. So if Cloudy right now, if maybe someone were to slam a door, if someone were to make a sudden loud sound, she would probably jump off Craig's lap because she is ready to hear any sort of sound that might alert her to danger and she's gonna take off running. And that is her best defense, so that's why she has those really big ears. And that brings up the good point that with all of these animals, we just went over a few today, but with any animal here at Brookfield Zoo, any animal you see, you can tell a lot about them and what they do in the wild based on their ears. So you can tell by Cloudy's ears that she might be looking to get away from a predator, or you can tell from Timo's ears that he just likes to hide up in the trees. And it tells you a lot about the animals and it's a fun thing to do to come to the zoo and to find out what you think an animal likes to do based on their ears. So of all of the animals, um, here at, <clears throat> excuse me, at Wild Encounters, Animal Ambassadors, and uh, Hamill Play Zoo. Who has the best hearing? The best hearing. Yeah, probably the um, screech owls, the birds of prey, have very good hearing. Um, like I had pointed out before, um, they need to be able to hear something very small moving. They might not be able to even see it. They might be able to catch that sound first. Um, it's kind of misleading since you can't even see their ears, but they do have fantastic hearing. How far away can they hear prey? How far? I don't have a number for that. I'm not sure, but pretty far away. Just, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure of a distance, but um, owls like screech owls and great horned owls can actually find and catch prey without seeing it. They can hear it rustling in the in the leaves or whatever and they can pinpoint where it is and they're actually able to go down and grab it just from hearing alone. So can you remind us again, is this a superb owl? <laughs> <laughs> he is a superb owl. He definitely <laughs> wants you to know that. <laughs> Um, so aside from the animals that we just saw here in this room, what other animals do you all take care of here at Brookfield Zoo? Man, we have a lot of animals here at Brookfield Zoo. So in Wild Encounters, we have our goats, we have the red panda. Uh, in the play zoo, we have ring-tailed lemurs. We have all sorts of snakes and leopard geckos. Um, behind the scenes, we have some binturongs, some servals. <laughs> Can we see the snake again? So, again, where, where are those ears? So on her, you're not going to see anything. Um, the parts that she uses are deep in her head, very similar to the kind of bones and structures we have inside, but it's just not anything you'd be able to see. And can you remind us what type of snake she is? She is a ball python. Ah, so she's the same as uh, Casper. Yes, right? exactly. Casper is leucistic, which is why she's all white. Um, but this is a pretty normal coloration for a ball python. Excellent. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope you learned a lot about ears. And hopefully in the next time you come out to Brookfield Zoo on March 1st, um, you can look around and try to find out what our animals like to do based on their ears. Thanks so much for joining us.